Hello everyone and welcome back to PHP 101 with me, James King. Now, we're up to episode 4 now and this is where it starts to get a bit technical. So today, we're going to do, uh, we're going to take a look at loops. Um, it may be a bit of a long episode, uh, I may split it into two episodes, I'm not quite sure yet, but you'll obviously see it on the YouTube page when it's ready. So, let's open our folder out. Um, let's open our PHP 101 folder. Create a new folder called episode 4 and open it in Sublime Text 2. This is just the code name I'm using, you don't have to use Sublime. And let's create a new file, loops.php. Again, as always, this file will be put on Pastebin and the link for that is in the description below. So you can download it and try it out for yourself. Okay, let's open PHP tags as usual. Now I'm just going over this quickly because you should already know this. If you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, then please do. Um, I'll give you a feel for how my tutorials work and and how to begin with PHP if you've not done it before. So today we'll look at loops. Now there's three types of loops. There's a for loop, there's a while loop, and there's a for each loop. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, hang on. There's a do while loop as well. Okay, so there's four loops then. The first one, the for loop, is the oldest in programming. Uh, it's been around for quite some time. So, uh, hang on a sec. Let me just hide this sidebar. There we go. Okay, so we'll do that one first. For loop. Okay. So to write a for loop, basically what a loop does is it runs a certain amount of code for a certain amount of time. So you could do you could write one line and you can run it like five times if you wanted to. So this is how you do a simple for loop. So the for loop is probably the most complicated I would have said as well. So be sure to take note on this one. So <clears throat> say we've got an array. Um, if you haven't viewed the arrays video then please do that. Say we've got an array and we have some items in here say we have we'll go with animals again this seems a good uh, dog, cat and fish I think that's what we had before probably in a different order okay so we've got an array <coughs> what if we wanted to perform an action on each one of these but this wasn't a set array if, say if this array was generated from somewhere else how would we loop through each item, not knowing how many items they're going to be? Well, this is where... Well, first off, the for loop is used when you know how many items there are. So we know there's three items here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we know that the... that this should, it should only loop through each of these. So firstly, we're going to open the for loop. It's the same as an if syntax, but in here it's very different. First off, we have to define a counter. Now, in, in PHP, by convention, you use $i, or if $i is used, you can use $j, then $k, etc. Um, so you start off with $i, it means incrementer or increment. So the first part is what the value starts off at. So we want our incrementer to be zero to start off with our counter, if you like. So then, the second part is the condition. So we do $i is less than the array length, uh, which you can get using count. The count function gets the length of the array, no matter how big it is. So this, so even if we added items on here, this would still, this script would still work. And then the last part is how much you want the counter to increment one, which is where we do plus plus, which means plus plus means plus one. So we're, we're incrementing the counter by one. So basically, the first time, the counter will be uh, zero. Then the second time, the counter will be one, and etc. And it will keep going until the i matches. I'll put this in so you can view this in the code. Until the dollar i matches to how many items in array, which is done using count there. Okay, 
So basically, it's going to start at zero, it's going to keep going up while the incrementer is less than the how many items there is. So we know here that there's three items. So this is going to be three. So when PHP comes down to the lines, it'll skip all these because they're comments. It'll hit the four and it'll go, okay, we want a loop. Firstly, I'm going to set I'm going to create something called dollar i and it's going to be zero. It's going to be an integer. Okay. Next, it will check. So it'll do this part. It will go, is zero, which is what it's set as, less than three, which is the count here. If it is, it will then run whatever's in here. Okay. So we're going to echo out. Uh, actually, yeah, we're going to echo out. Uh, hang on a second. Let me do this to make it easier. So we're going to do the loop number, which is going to be i plus 1. Okay. That should work, I think. So this here is less than the count which means it's going to run this and then when it hits here it will run the end here so it will plus one and then it will start again it will go back to here and it will go now i is one is i still less than three yes it is so it will run this again and here we've actually referenced the counter so this will say loop one loop two loop three it should output on the page because it should have done that three times because then it will it'll eventually come round and it will say Say if dollar i is now three, which is what it will get to. It will come to here and it will go. I is now three. Is i less than three? No, it isn't. And that's when it will skip and it will continue down your script. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to get. The for loop is the most is the most complicated, and the other ones are actually easier. So, but the for loop is still quite useful and is used in Java and quite a lot of programming languages. Um, so continue when dollar uh, i, which is our incrementer, is less than three, which is the count of this array, which is how many items are in this array. If we added another item, say we added uh, a lion, so that's the fourth item. So this would now be four. So we'd actually loop it once more because it knows there's another item there. So we're going to see how this runs. So first off, I'm going to run up my MAMP because I've not run it. It should ask me for my password. Oh. Okay. Um, this is what's known. Wow. It's known as a loop where you know how many times you want it to loop. The other ones loop depending on a condition a lot of the time, which I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you what makes that different. So let's open Chrome. Uh, let's go to. Let's just hide this uh, bar here. I should have hidden it before I started. Um, sure, okay. So let's go to localhost. TWF PHP 101, the same as before. Episode four. Okay. So in here, we've got a loops file right here. Uh, as you can see, it's just output is 111 which is strange actually that's not what it should be doing uh, okay I'm just going to use another variable here um, just to see if I can get this working sometimes you have to fiddle with it because of that plus one there I think I was overwriting I which is what was confusing the loop so if I set that to another variable that should be better now hopefully yeah there we go uh, just for the simple, just to make it easier, look on screen easier, I'm just going to add a break in there, HTML break. You can put HTML in these, don't forget. Hit refresh, there you go, loop 1, loop 2, loop 3. So it has done that code, that one line there, three times. We've looped it successfully. And that's your basic for loop. Next loop, we'll do while. I do use the while loop quite a lot in my coding. So let's see how this goes on. So first off, we'll go create an array again. I'm just going to copy and paste the one above just to save time and, echo and comment that out. Now a while loop is very different. A while loop continues until 
So while this is true, loop. Okay. Now you've got to be really careful because you can cause PHP to crash if you don't use whiles correctly. You can actually cause Apache to crash. Um, my MAMP would crash. If this was always true, it would do an infinite loop. So basically, you've got to make sure that you change this at some point. So what I normally do is I create a count. You can do this, but again, this just makes it the same as a for loop, really, if you create a count. So let's not do that. So while dollar $end is, tr is false, so while it's false, the exclamation mark means the opposite of whatever that is. So while that's false, so we're setting it to false, so the loop should go until it's true. So if... Um, so you could obviously do some code in here to loop until dollar end is changed. Say if you had say if you had a fraction stored in two arrays, because obviously you can't store a fraction, and you wanted to reduce it down to its original form, you could do a loop like this to say when it's done to stop the loop, but it would loop through trying to halve it and halve it and halve it. And then when it couldn't halve it, you could set end to false, which would break out the loop. So if we're just going to do end is false there. Um, uh, dollar, uh, let me just think a second. If dollar loop breaker, this is just for the sake of example, then we do dollar end is true. Else, dollar loop breaker is true. Okay, so this is going to go through first. It's going to go while. It says, is end false? And there it is. It is false. So then it will come into here and it will go, is loop breaker true? No, it isn't. The first time around, we haven't set loop breaker, so it doesn't exist. So then we hit the else. This is the basic if else that I've seen, that I've shown you in another tutorial. And then we set loop breaker as true. And then this will loop back around and go, is end still false? Which it is, we haven't changed it. And it will say, is loop breaker true? Which we've now set it as true. Which means now it will set the end as true. And it will come around and it will check again and say, is end false? Which it isn't, because we've set it to true. And that's when it will break out the loop. So, we're going to just say, looped. Which it should come up twice. Oh, see, we've got a PHP error here because I haven't I have an undefined variable. It has worked, but this is a PHP notice, which means it's not an error that stops the script. So the script does continue, but you shouldn't have these in your code. It's because I've got loop breaker here, but I haven't defined it before checking for it. So loop breaker is false, and that'll fix that. It's because here I'm checking for something that doesn't exist and PHP's going, hang on, that doesn't even exist. So if we hit refresh, there you go, looped, looped. So that's that code there is run twice. Which in this case I'm just gonna add a break. There we go. Okay. And that'll be it for this episode. This code will be online. <coughs> um, to make it easier, in the when I do the second episode. The code will change to a new revision, and the download link will stay the same, but it will have the whole, the whole ream of it for both episodes on loops. Okay, uh, we seem to have run out of time for this episode, but next episode I'll do the for each and do while loops, and then we'll move on to another topic. So feel free to download this. Uh, let me just uncomment that out, and I hope this has given you some insight on the power of PHP and what it can do. So please like if you like this episode and subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.